So I'll take some shots with the uh, RX-100. So guys, I've just ditched the audio again. It was so, so windy. It was ridiculous. Um, it was a constant uh, sort of wind pressure. So the microphones couldn't even, you know, obviously hold that back. Um, so a bit of voiceover instead. This is a follow-up from the RX-100 Mark VI uh, camera sort of video. So obviously I had my RX-10 Mark IV with me, which you can see there in camera. Um, so I thought I would take a few shots with this, obviously while I was there. Um, and just to kind of see what the real difference was once I put down a very small camera with a lot of capabilities and picked up its sort of bigger brother um, and uh, my initial feeling was I'm used to a large camera so it felt instantly um, better in the hand but obviously because you got more control um, and actually in the high winds it was actually slightly easier to hold it still because even though it's bigger and I was getting buffeted more a small camera is actually harder to hold still um, both have, have got really good um, stabilization and everything so it's still both cameras were given brilliant um, footage and photos and everything no problem at all as you can see here from video um, but yeah I mean the RX-10 uh, main difference between the RX-100 is obviously size but also 600 millimeters instead of 200 millimeters but that's what that's the sort of trade-off by going smaller um, but still keeping a very high quality uh, image yes you can buy uh, compacts with 720 millimeter zooms on it and yeah they're okay but you do compromise on quality big time I have and I have seen the difference um, so you know um, so anyway back to the RX-10 Mark IV obviously producing uh, you know awesome images as usual and it was lovely light it was you know it was windy as anything the quality of light was actually really nice it wasn't too harsh uh, unless I shot straight into the sun a few times but <clears throat> it was uh, you know as you can see there it was it was quite a nice light um, it worked out you know really really well especially in a couple of uh, couple of videos uh, clips I actually captured just at the right moment by sheer luck as in like a seagull flying past uh, for example and some of the slow motion video worked really well so I was shooting at 500 frames per second um, on some of them this was 100 frames per second and then slowed down four times um, which works quite nicely especially with 500 frames a second you don't really need on uh, things like surfers I mean it looks quite cool if you can get close enough to them and everything and luckily we've got a sea wall in Hastings that you can literally just stand on so the surfers are literally pretty much below you as you can see there um, but you know so that gives you a, a nice vantage point where obviously to get a photo like that normally you'd have to um, be on a boat or something like that or in the water with the surfers so it kind of benefits that as well and when we go, do get some decent sized waves it's um, it can make some really really good images and uh, on both cameras I got some very very good um, shots of uh, surfers doing their thing so really pleased with both cameras there uh, and it's a bit of slow motion of the waves crashing up over the uh, the sea wall there which was uh, kind of unexpected actually because with the new rocks they've put a load of rocks there so I thought it was less likely to come over but it still comes over apparently uh, 500 frames per second crashing waves and it sort of vaporized almost the wave completely so you can see it every single little splosh of water there that's coming down but it's backlit by the sun so it's giving it a real sort of glittery sort of uh, look which actually looks quite cool and then I sped it back up back to more of a, a usual speed which is quite cool there was a crash car there I'm guessing it was driven in the snow or something when we had all the ice and snow or stolen or something I don't know but it's still there um, uh, it's a bit of a sad sad faced golf there or polo whichever it is I think it's a golf um, there's a couple of surfing shots which worked out quite nice um, as you can see there's no trouble at all locking on and tracking uh, tracking their subject at all and that's where the um, both cameras in for example this um, both cameras were just locking onto their targets no trouble at all the focusing systems on the um, even the mirrorless and the RX-10 and the um, RX-100s now are ridiculously fast and very accurate as well I never sharpen my images anymore there's no need you know even if you got it slightly out of focus before you could sort of tweak a little bit of extra sharpening in areas and it would sort of correct you a little bit of soft image there but now um, a7r3 that I've got the RX-10 Mark IV and obviously I've used the RX-100 they're all razor sharp images straight out of the camera even with this shot here with a, a very light background the camera was still focusing and finding that seagull which I was amazed about um, <coughs> the uh, I couldn't believe how how low this uh, seagull got to that wave. And in fact, 
I think it goes even lower. Next next shot's even closer. Um, yeah, there we go. So either he got wasn't expecting that wave to be quite as big as it was, but he was just being a dare, daredevil. But uh, quite a cool shot there. And you know, it's it's quite happily tracking tracking the autofocus on there. Uh, surfer coming in, massive crash of the waves and everything. Um, but I'm shooting into the sun there, so to get the exposure right on the surfer rather than obviously silhouetting and things like that. It's still allowing me that was uh, this. Um, this shot here, I'm really quite pleased about because I just about kept his uh, full shadow in um, from the sun. So I'm really pleased about that that photo, uh, which is really really cool. Um, he was going quite fast as well, so just tracking him. This one here, the big big splash of water um, coming up, and you can see all the little water, water droplets off the board coming off at the, the front end, which is quite cool as well. Uh, shooting about eight hundredth of a second, something like that, um, and then the second one there. Uh, whether sort of, uh, what do they call it carving? I think if I'm if I'm correct, uh, when they carve a wave and they sort of turn and turn quickly, um, and you're spraying water up everywhere, look quite cool. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, swimming back out. This is where the RX10 Mark IV comes into its own, where you can zoom in a little bit further, and uh, you know you can get the get the shots that you can't really get um, elsewhere. But because you've got an f4 lens, you know it's still allowing you tons of light and obviously the shallow depth of field starts happening as well um, there is a surfer in there somewhere he got uh, flung off um, this is just Hastings Beach there you can see lovely white fluffy clouds and blue sky but the wind was I have no idea how fast but it was just a pressure um, you know it was just constant pressure so you're being buffeted all the time as you can see the seagulls here um, attempting to uh, stay in flight and actually fly around um, but there you can see the camera is just literally locked onto that one there and uh, followed it. This lady almost got absolutely soaked, literally the wave just touched her shoes, which is quite funny. She wasn't paying attention, picking up shells or something I'd imagine, um, which is quite funny. You got the little splashes, oh yeah she did get wet very slightly, just hit her shoes. Um, but uh, luckily she didn't get any wetter than that, which could have been, could have been worse. Um, could have been worse, you could have got hit by a big wave and got knocked over or dragged out, but yeah, but some people don't have a much clue about that, unfortunately. Uh, I quite like this, it was just a silhouette shot there waiting for the wave as such, they were just sitting there waiting, um, which worked quite nicely. And uh, so these are just a few shots I took. Uh, this shot here, having 24 frames per second, it allows you to obviously track an image, but also capture just that moment where that ball is bouncing above the wave because the wave came flying in underneath the ball the ball was actually was in mid bounce as the uh, the wave came in uh, surfer there going again but it, it the angle I'm shooting at it could have been that wave behind him it could actually be another five feet higher it really gives you the a sort of a, a false angle of view which accentuates that actually the wave's bigger than it is because the way I'm shooting at it so it works really really quite well <coughs> Sorry about my cough, it's uh, doing my head in as well. Uh, this shot here is where he's just, just coming off, he's just finished the um, sort of with the wave and everything, so he just launches himself off the board, and uh, which is quite a cool um, way to go, just bails off, which is quite cool, and then sort of splashes into the sea. So all these shots are wide open at f4, around uh, about between 400 and 600 millimeters, depending on where they were. Um, the only downside of the RX10 Mark IV, and they still wish they'd do another firmware update, is that allow you to zoom in and out while you've got your finger on the um, autofocus button. So when it's tracking, autofocus tracking, you know, if you've got a 70 to 200 mil lens on your A7R3, for example, you can zoom in and out as much as you like, or the 150 to 600, and autofocus still works. Um, with the RX10 Mark IV, it still works uh, when you're videoing. You can zoom in and out. So why doesn't it work when you are zooming, trying to zoom in and out when you're auto-focusing uh, whilst you're taking stills? It's a shame you can't can't do that. It's just you know, uh, on the main benefit though is that if track it focuses so fast that you actually you have time to generally to back out or zoom in and then refocus and take the shot anyway. So you don't really miss too much. Uh, two people stood there with their, their jacket on, um, being absolutely buffeted by the wind. This shot here, seagull shooting into the sun. But I've just lifted the uh, shadows there just to show the seagull a little bit. Um, but it's kind of a cool shot with all the boker in the background of the sea and everything like that. And this is um, obviously a wave coming in, crashing onto the side of the seawall. Um, about 
eight hundredths of a thousandth of a second, something like that. Uh, works quite nicely. <coughs> um, oh, it's a black and white. A couple of shots. Uh, quite like this because it it brings out the white of like the the spray coming up off the waves there, and uh, across the top of the seawall there you can see the spray coming across. Um, and then there was a squirrel. Um, I've moved inland. Um, I found a squirrel which was uh, actually relatively tame, and uh, he ran up a tree literally in front of me, and I was within the just around about a meter at 600 mil. So this is a handheld. And literally, I took one picture and off he went. So I was quite lucky to get that photo. Um, and then one last shot, which was uh, surfer again. Just one last shot, um, just from above, really, just cruising past, um, and uh, it worked really well. So quite pleased that I managed to get both cameras side by side. Um, obviously, the baby, baby little one, um, RX100 Mark VI. All the bells and whistles worked really, really well. Really pleased how that camera worked. Surprisingly, um, very, very capable. Um, also reading reviews, people saying it can't do this, can't do that. Yeah, well, it's always going to be a compromise. Um, being a, a pocket camera, it's tiny. Um, it's smaller than your iPhone. You know, it's you know. Um, but what it packs in the quality it's chucking out is really, really good. And the shots are as sharp as anything. Um, and just as pleasing to look at as from out the RX10 Mark IV. So um, with its £1,150 price tag, yes, it's very expensive. But what it can do is for the you know having it in your pocket you can get it out and you've got so much control so many options of different functions and stuff it can do it you've got so much you can do which is really really cool um and then obviously with the rx10 mark 4 i've had that camera over a year now and i use it daily just because it's so handy to use um it's worth every single penny so anyway guys that's just a quick look at the other photos i took from yesterday um obviously with the rx10 and the rx100 mark 6 um, side by side so please subscribe please click the notification bell and I'll see you soon